I'm now going to ask my colleague Linda McEvan um, to talk a little bit about the European Parliament and the attempts that have been made by the Commission uh, to try and bring forward legislation for safer tourism uh, across Europe. Um, and this is something that Linda has battled with over uh, an, an, a nine-year period. So, Linda, can you, can you bring us up to speak, perhaps look back and then tell us yeah. where you think we're going to go forward? Yeah, well, I, I first became involved back in 2006 when I met uh, Mr Shepherd and Mrs Wood um, just after their children had died, died in Corfu. And they asked me a very simple question, which is, why are there no rules about having to have a carbon monoxide detector if you've got a gas boiler? And was there anything at European level? And to my astonishment, there are no rules at European level on carbon monoxide safety. Um, what you have, you have legislation, regulations about safety of boilers, um, which have improved over the years. And there is a recommendation on fire safety dating back to 1986. But that's a recommendation to individual governments. So governments. We say whether they've done anything or not done anything, but it's not a law, it's not binding on member states in the same way a piece of legislation would be. So we did start looking at, could we bring in legislation? And the European Commission was, was sympathetic. And they said they felt that it was a reasonable request that if you travel within the European Union, you should be able to expect similar safety standards in your tourism accommodation. And the first thing that happened was that they, the industry didn't want Legi uh, didn't want legislation, the hotel industry. Um, but, so they, they said they would try a voluntary approach. And so for a number of years, the hotel industry worked with the European Commission to draw up guidance on, um, on, on general safety in hotels, including carbon monoxide safety. And they came up with a, with a programme called the Management Buildings and Systems Initiative, the MBS Initiative, and originally we had thought that you would have this standard and then the hotel industry in Europe would adopt it, that individual hotels would sign up so that the standard, the charter as they called it, would be applied in the individual hotels. But right at the end of the process, the hotel industry said, we're not prepared to do that. We will simply adopt a charter, <coughs> but the charter will not, be, will not be signed by individual hotels. In other words, it was kind of a, another kind of statement of intent without hotels having to sign up. The European Commission said that's not good enough, we want more than that, we want something which makes a difference. And so they began, first of all they looked for data, and I think that's the question the doctors just read, Dr Clark just read, the lack of data. They said to draw up legislation we need data at European level on um, carbon monoxide, deaths, accident, injury. Um, now the Commission <coughs> can only collect data where governments give them data. And the problem was that governments do not collect data in a sufficient way to actually um, break down the data. For example, governments don't make a distinguish between people who take their own life with carbon monoxide poisoning and those who are involved in accidents when they, when they record cause of death. So it's very difficult to get the data. They then said, OK, we can't get the data, so what we'll do, we'll have a consultation. We'll launch a green paper on safety in tourism accommodation. And they did that back in 2013. In 2014, they collected in the responses of different stakeholders, that's governments, um, industry, hotel industry, and the travel agencies, consumer groups, fire safety chiefs. And um, they spent about six months analysing it. So it wasn't until late 2014, early this year, that they finally analysed all the results. And the results showed a mixed picture. It showed that the hotel industry again said that it felt there were sufficient regulations in place at national level and that there wasn't a need for action. The travel agencies who had from the start said they felt there should be some European legislation. Consumer groups also, all the safety groups, fire chiefs all felt there should be action. Governments didn't, not, not that many governments took part in the consultation and um, our own government did not support any EU action and simply said that standards for carbon monoxide safety were adequate in our own country, which doesn't address the problem of when people travel to other countries. And um, so um, the, the European, just so people understand, we often have the impression in this country that the European Commission can just sit there 
put a law on the table and push it through and adopt something and apply it in all countries. That's not how EU lawmaking works. The European Commission can only put a draft law on the table. For that law to become a law, it has to be agreed by governments of Europe, 28 member states, and it has to be agreed by members of the European Parliament. So the European Commission is not going to put a law on the table unless it feels it's got a good chance of getting that law through. And at the moment, from the Green Paper, they are saying they don't have um, strong evidence to take that, that action any further forward. Um, the, beyond, that's the work on tourism safety. Beyond that, we've done other things in the last nine years. There's a new law going through on improving boiler and, the, and gas appliance safety. Again, as MEPs, we try to get in that legislation provisions on servicing of appliances by professionally competent people, use of detectors. But um, the answer from governments, again, is that this, this legislation is about appliance safety. It's only about domestic appliance safety, not, not, not commercial boilers. And so we've only got recommendations for how, how appliances should be serviced in that legislation. We have, had, we have had an increase in numbers of deaths from people using barbecues in recent times indoors, and we had a discussion with the all-party group about three years ago. And from that discussion, we have now got European action that barbecues be labelled as dangerous and given information on them. Because people didn't, I didn't know, and so I met somebody actually in the House of Commons, somebody who came to give evidence about his wife who died with an indoor, using a barbecue, which had gone out inside, brought it into a tent after it had been extinguished. Um, so I didn't realise it was so dangerous. And so we did have, we now will have the labelling on the barbecues. And we've also had substandard detectors taken off the market. That's another problem. We're after the publicity around what happened in Corfu. People, travel agents, people said members of the public should take detectors. I don't buy that, actually. I don't think it's up to members of the public to take detectors on holiday to protect themselves. I think it's people who supply the service should protect the, the consumers. But anyway, we did have a, a sort of surge in people buying, buying carbon monoxide detectors, but unfortunately many substandard products were on the market. So there is a process inside the European Union to take substandard products off the market, and that was triggered. And uh, we worked with industry to get, to get that, off, that, that to happen. So we have seen some <coughs> improvements, but I suppose the real question now today is what can we do next? Can we get the Commission, European Commission to reconsider? and say, OK, the responses to the Green Paper were mixed, but we are now going to go forward. To be, I think that's quite a long shot at the moment, um, unless the UK government would have to be very vocal and it would have to convince other governments that we need action. We'd have to see the industry act together. We have the hotel industry with its position, travel agencies with their position, and to be honest, after nine years, I felt a lot of book passing between the two. You know, sort of, you lobby for something, you're not sure it's going to happen. And I think there's more that all sides of industry could do. I'm really pleased that Thomas Cook's here today. Um, I wonder whether the travel agencies could look at using their contracting muscle, for example, to require higher safety standards <coughs> where they contract. Or, or just by pure coincidence, on Friday, I was just in a local shop, and the woman there said, oh, I saw you on television talking about... Um, about carbon monoxide and, and detectors. She said, I rent a holiday cottage out and I've got to have detector in my holiday cottage because it's a requirement of the, of the agency who deal with the rentals. So I think there is more could be done even on that kind of voluntary basis if the industry really wanted to move this forward. Um, and again, although I know that the APTA did a submission to the European Commission, Thomas Cook did a submission, I haven't seen Thomas Cook's submission, um, I do think that it's about being vocal. I don't know whether any of you have sought meetings with the European Commission to put the case for European legislation. Because although industry has made submissions, the Commission are not feeling any great pressure. Our government's not feeling any great pressure from industry at the moment, present time, I don't think. So I think there's more could be done um, in the future. On Wednesday, as a follow-up to this meeting, we'll bring stakeholders together in Brussels at a round table on Wednesday afternoon. I'm hoping that from today we can learn lessons there and look for a path forward and um, I look forward to hearing the other speakers. Thank you.